the main thing that I'm trying to capture with the idea of legal estrangement is simply how the law and the state and how the institutions within, within it signal whether groups are included or excluded from uh, the society, from the social order. And a lot of the conversations we've been having about reform right now, there's been a, a lot of focus on building trust. And I think that um, has some value, but at the end of the day, a lot of times, uh, certainly based on the research I've done in uh, predominantly African-American communities in DC, in Baltimore, in Cleveland, um, what you see over and over again is that people aren't concerned about whether they can trust these institutions or whether they can trust the police, but more about how the police are just one other example of um, an institution that is saying your group doesn't matter. Your group's not really one that we value. And so that's what I'm trying to capture with this idea of legal estrangement. I did this study in Washington, D.C. I interviewed 50 uh, low-income African-American mothers about not just police. It actually didn't start as a policing project. It started as a project that was about how low-income uh, mothers navigate the state. And so I was asking questions about uh, housing and asking questions about um, the child welfare system actually quite uh, extensively. What came up over and over again is people actively raising police as, um, uh, when, when I would ask about other sorts of law, people would tell me about the police. And what came out of that for me was this idea that even as distrusted as police are, mothers often talked about calling them or calling upon them or kind of resorting to engaging with the police because of the kind of messiness of dealing with other institutions. In the paper, talk about four key findings. So one of them is officer exceptionalism. So the idea that even while um, a mother might say, the police are, cro are crooked, the police are terrible, et cetera, they might also talk, in, talk about uh, trusting a particular police officer, or having a positive sort of relationship or interaction with a particular police officer. Um, second, domain specificity. So. Um, that's where mothers would say, um, I'm not going to call the police about a thing that the police actually want to be called about, so a crime out and of happening in the public domain. And, but I will call about things that are happening inside my own home or things that I perceive to be a direct threat to me and my family. And so that creates an interesting um, effect where oftentimes they would talk about from the police angle, the police would say, well, why are you calling us? Or treat them disrespectfully upon receiving a call about something they didn't b believe to be worthy. But this was in fact uh, a type of situation in which the mothers felt, uh, some of the mothers felt that, um, that the police could be useful. Uh, third was therapeutic consequences. So calling the police um, because uh, a loved one has some sort of um, need that is not being met in the current framework. So for example, uh, you know, one example is a mother who called the police um, uh, in order, who called the Metropolitan Police Department in order to get a probation officer for her son to make sure that he wasn't truant um, because, you know, of concerns about the school and concerns about the child welfare system. So, um, so those are uh, three exa some examples, and then the fourth finding, and the, that's the one I was alluding to the most, um, is institutional navigation. So essentially calling the police in order to navigate some other institution, whether it be the child welfare system, um, it kind of, that's related to the probation officer example, um, but also uh, calling the police in order to get a police report, um, in order to be able to uh, change a uh, public housing system. You know, things like this um, were uh, the, the core findings of that study. But it actually originated out of a broader interest in uh, uh, the relationship between low-income African-American mothers and the law, which emanated from my work as a legal aid attorney in DC. In the earlier days of Black Lives Matter, a lot of the story, a lot of the underlying story was about um, highly segregated spaces and the harsh and terrible policing that arises out of that. So um, that's the underlying story in Baltimore, that's the underlying story in Cleveland where Tamir Rice, you know, 
That's certainly the story in New York, um, um, and this absolutely the story in Ferguson, the St. Louis area. I mean, so 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 that's the story. Um, one of the challenges, though, is that in the more recent conversations we've been having about people, you know, basically you know, white people calling the police on African Americans going about their daily lives, one could look at that as, you know, a story about micro level integration where black people are being seen as out of place and then are therefore policed in a certain way. Research on um, kind of experiences where African Americans have moved to uh, more integrated areas shows that sometimes, uh, uh, that many times the police are used to um, kind of clamp down on them and sort of drive them out of spaces. So the impulse would be that integration is really not an appropriate, like kind of necessarily the most important response to issues with the police. I think it's really critical, um, in part because many of the reforms, many of the, the lenses for reform that we think um, are valuable in policing are not going to be possible to be sustained for a long run within a, within a, without a much more integrated polity. So you know, I, I make that argument um, for things like procedural justice. Um, so procedural justice and legitimacy is a bundle of reforms that people try to propose, that people advocate and propose, and that's all good. The problem is when procedural justice and legitimacy is perceived as a way of dealing with the problem of police distrust between poor, Afri between, like, poor African Americans and the police, it becomes sort of a, it, it moves away from this universalist frame and instead becomes you know, special pleading or specialized for African Americans, which makes it inherently difficult to sustain. So that's just one example, but, 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 but the, core, the core idea is that um, we really have to push forward on residential integration in a way that movement actors have really moved away from or kind of disavowed entirely.